Okay, we're going to start the hexagon shelf project today. I'm pretty excited about this project. I think it'll be kind of fun for you to uh, build. It teaches you some pretty good stuff. Um, anyway, the first step is creating the essentially the depth of the shelf. So I think a, a good depth is three and a half to four inches uh, for this project. If you exceed that, you will not be able to use a miter box to cut the angles and then it becomes a lot harder to do on the table saw. So I want you to stay under four inches or at four inches. Do not go over four inches because then you can't use um, a 12 inch miter box um, to cut the angles. So I've chosen exactly four inches and um, I have the, my edge is all jointed. So. miter saw now this is the saw that's going to do the most work on this project really so um, a couple really important things I want to mention um, one is the angle it needs to be at 30 degrees it needs to be right on 30 degrees and it needs to be locked down so um, that's really important you want uh, that to be as accurate as you can get it for this project especially over here I have a stop block. This is going to be really important too. This is going to help me measure my pieces because we want these to be all exactly the same uh, length. So that will really make a difference. For that I'm measuring six and a half inches from here to about where the blade is going to cut. That measurement right here isn't um, super critical. It just needs to be all the same. So you could have um, you know that at six and three eighths or six and three quarters or seven inches and as, as long as they're all the same that's going to be okay because this is a four foot long board so I have a little bit of room for leeway um, you're not going to be able to get much over seven inches but um, somewhere in there is going to work out really well um, another really important thing is I, I've used c-clamps to clamp this down I think they're a lot more secure than um, you know, then the squeeze clamp. So my first thing I need to do is I'm gonna cut just the end of this board off. I'm gonna hold the board nice and tight uh, past the margin of safety. And I'm gonna always work on this um, past the margin of safety. So I'm not gonna be holding the end that is actually gonna be my good end. I'm gonna be holding uh, the, the waist end of the board, so to speak. So normally I would be holding this end, but there's it's too close, it's, not da it's too dangerous um, to do that. So. I'm going to be holding this end, and um, so I'm going to cut the end of the board, then I'm going to flip it over, put that up against my stop block, make another cut, flip it over, put it up against my stop block, and then eventually it's going to get to where I, it's too small for me to hold on to. So then I'm just going to clamp my board over here um, as well, so that way I don't have to get my hands too close. So I'll, you'll watch me do this. I'll never get my hands past the margin of safety line. shim I put at the back that boosted that up it's the 
I'm excited to show you how to uh, how to clamp these up. So the first thing I'm going to do is dry fit this with the clamp. And uh, I get a lot of people make mistakes; they want to rush through this. So I need to set my clamps up. These are the Merle Kroner clamps. These things are awesome. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I just need six or six corners. So I'm going to bolt this side right here. It's a half inch wrench, I think. And then I take this off. I gotta give myself a, a little more cable. Okay, I'll just kinda let you watch what I'm doing here. And then I'm gonna take this one off. And um, pull two of these out. So I have six, right? I'm gonna have to loosen this. So these are really easy to use. Uh, I find that people overcomplicate them quite often, but they're really easy to use. So I want to put this one in, and this one, and this one, and this one. this. I have to over tighten it, but nice and easy. I like a lot of thread here to begin with. And I'm going to pull this out more. I'm going to need quite a bit more cable. Alright. I'm going to try to stretch this around. So, yeah, it's awkward. I'm not saying it's not awkward, but it's really not what I consider difficult. So I started this one. The main one, okay, and then I work my way around. Uh, you know, I have it positioned to where this is the bolted end, so I'm going counterclockwise around to line these up. So a lot of people will give up on this so easy; it's crazy. All right. So now I'm kind of getting to the right position. I'm going to pull out a little slack. Alright, now I'm going to tighten this handle. So I tighten this handle first. Okay, that one first. And now I can start to tighten the red handle to get this sized up. Okay, and I want to see if it actually works, you know, if my miters are good, if it actually works. So I'm just checking it out, put a little more pressure on it, and uh, yeah, that looks pretty, pretty good. So if I like it, if my joints look good, now I can... Uh, loosen it and add some glue so um, now I just I'm going to loosen this red handle all the way probably so it falls down then I can start to apply some glue so I'm going to apply the glue to both of these sections okay on both sides I'm going to work as fast as I can so I'll get glue all over the table Alright, 
and I'm going to start to put it together. Put a nice amount of glue on that end grain. So the end grain is going to soak it, this up pretty good. And it's, it's kind of a weak joint whenever you're gluing end grain together. It's not a, what I'd consider a real long, real strong joint. All right, so now I'm kind of lining it up. I'm going to tighten this red hand a little bit. I can start to move these up. I'm going to tighten the red hand a little more. Start to move these up. And uh, this, this will work better if you have two people working on this together. One person can kind of work on each side. So now I'm just kind of tying it up here. So I'm going to tighten it up a little more. I'm going to wipe the glue off the inside because that's going to be a lot harder for me to clean up later. You know, the outside is going to be pretty easy, but okay. So there we have it. I got the clamps kind of in the middle. Would be a bad idea to wipe some extra off the outside too. Okay. And I uh, see this one I didn't push all the way down to the table. It's sticking up just a little bit. There it goes. So I push that down just a little bit more. Alright, that's gluing it up. So now I'm gonna glue up a couple more. All right, so I took the clamps off these and um, I'm, I sanded them with the orbit sander around the outside, sanded the inside a little more, hand sanded, and then I sanded one of the edges nice and flat, um, just laid it down and sanded it. So now remember, this is going to be super um, delicate when you take it off the, the clamps. I mean, I guess super might be a little bit of exaggeration, but if you drop this, it's probably going to break because end grain just doesn't glue um, as well as some of the other ways. So one thing I like to do is put a couple brad nails in there just to help secure it. Um, I do that mainly only if I'm going to paint these. So if I'm going to put a stain or a clear coat on there, I don't usually do that. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, it's because the nails don't go all the way in because of the angle. So then you have to take a nail set and pound those in a little bit more and then put some wood fill because I don't like to see nails on my project. So what I tried to do in the past, if I was doing that, I'd hide it. So if I had another one here, I'd put the nails on both insides so I don't have to worry about it as much. But there's still some other surfaces that make it a little bit harder. So for these, you know, just because they're barely poking out, I mean, I'm just going to run the sander right over them. I'm not going to, you know, spend a lot of time, but... Um, if they're just poking out just a tiny bit like this, it's really not going to be a big deal. If they're poking out a lot, it's going to wreck the sandpaper and the sander pad. So you don't want to do that. But if it's just poking out just a tiny bit, you can just sand that. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. But I want to show you a couple tips on that. So here is uh, you know, my, my brad nailer. And um, I'm trying to hold it at the, the angle to where I can... You know, get it as close to the workpiece as possible where I'm trying to put the nail. And then, um, and this also helps me uh, keep the nail straight. So I'm trying to keep it in a straight line right there. All right, and then that goes pretty well. Notice I didn't have my hand right here because uh, if I do slip, I don't want to have any problems. So see, I'm kind of laying the nail gun over this. All right, and then I'm kind of just flipping it around. And that way, See the difference here? When I had the, the nail gun going this way, it sunk that nail in pretty well. But when I moved it to the other way, it's sticking out a little too far here. So I have to lightly tap that with a hammer. If you tap it too hard with the hammer, it's gonna break. So you kinda gotta watch out for that. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna router the corners. So I'm just gonna take this, I have a small roundover bit on there that's, uh, I think it's like 3 16 radius. And I'm going to go around the outside of all these and around the inside of all these just to kind of create a nice little edge to knock off that sharp corner. And um, just something I like to do on my furniture. I don't like those the sharp edges on most things I make. 
I think it looks a little nicer. So that'll be the next thing I do um, on these. And then I'll, I'll show you the next step in a second. All right, one tip I want to give you when you're routering these, when you're routering the inside, go around clockwise. And when you're routering the outside, go around counterclockwise. It'll help it cut a little smoother. Uh, one thing I like to do when I glue these up, some people like to go ahead and paint these separately, and some people like to hook them together first. It's really up to you. I make these uh, little shims. So this is just out of some quarter inch plywood, and I made it a half inch smaller than this piece on these three sides. So if I put it here, this is a half inch smaller on those three sides. So my goal is to put a little bit of glue on this. I'm not going to get carried away on the glue because it's, you know, it's going to hold pretty well. And I'm going to put this here, put my other piece on there. And then I'll probably put two clamps on here uh, like this. So I'll clamp it to isolate it down the table, but and I'll do two more here. And you can kind of mess around with your configuration, uh, whichever way you think uh, would be a great way to go with this. One thing I think about when I'm configuring these is the, the spacing of the studs in the wall. So you want to, this is going to have to be mounted to where it hooks onto a stud on the wall. So I'm looking at 16 inch spacing. So if I, if I go across, like, you know, if it's going this way, you know, I'm not going to be quite be able to reach 32 inches this way. So it's kind of an awkward spacing. Here's my 16. So I'd have to have a way to hook it, you know, at that point. Just start, just think about that a little bit before you glue it up. Make sure there's a way where you can get two, you can hit two studs in the wall. Um, so that way it's not, you know, all, all lopsided once you hang it up. Okay, I want to give you some pointers for hanging this on the wall. And um, the, one way you can do it is just to make some brackets that would go on the, on the inside that you just put a screw directly into the wall, okay? So this would be like a little cleat that you would put on maybe two or three of these hexagons way at the back where it would be mounted to the wall. And that way you can just, um, you know, screw this directly to a wall. Obviously you're going to want to hit a stud. Um, the other way would be to make what I call like a story stick. So this is um, a board that has two screws placed in it, um, 32 inches apart. So the reason I picked uh, 32 inches is because the studs in a house are 16 inches on center. So I just doubled that. So I'm going to try to hit two studs. So then I just take my story stick and I'm trying to place this at, um, at a location that would serve me best for my, my keyholes. So the one thing I obviously want to do is make sure that it's even from left to right. So this is two and a quarter. This is two. So I got to move this down just a little more. And then I'm going to... So you're just kind of setting this up and then you're going to dent this. When I get this right, I'm going to push down and it'll make a mark of where my keyholes are going to go. So I might kind of have some fun with this. I might make it to where the shelf hangs like this. And then I might also put these going a different way so I could configure this on a wall, a different spot. So I'll show you how I did this um, as soon as I get my keyholes in there. But this will give me the location of my keyholes. So this is a dent that my screw made when I pushed on it. And then this is, I went down 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to start my router bit there at 3 eighths, and then I'm going to move it up. So I'm using a, a keyhole bit for that. Here's a look at the keyhole bit. I'm going to plunge it in right here, and then I'm just going to move it straight up, and I'm going to stop. Okay, I don't have a good spot to really hang this up to show you this, but here is my keyhole that I made. So the, the screw will just go in and then slide up. So I made two so it can it can go this way. All right, and then I made one that can go this way. So there's a pair going this way. And then I did the opposite, like all the way upside down here. Um, so then you can slide it on this way. So you would, on your wall, you'd have to measure that out. You put two screws on your studs at 32 inches apart. And then it just slides in these keyholes.